Hey, it's Coach Taylor from SmarterTeamTraining.com. I got a guy on the phone named TJ Lynch. He's actually been at a couple different uh, SEC events, and uh, I actually have connected with his wife on Facebook, and I kind of follow their um, their successes and their stories through their, through her Facebook feed. So it's it's uh, a lot of fun. A lot of times to actually go back and reconnect with some of the people that you've met in in the past, uh, and just stay relevant in their lives as well as start to start to ask questions. Uh, again, the two main questions I, I challenge anybody to ask, what do you know now that you wish you knew then, and what has worked for you? And, and feel free to reach out to professionals in our field and ask those two questions, and then just be quiet and listen to the response. You, you may not necessarily find an answer, but these responses might lead to better questions down the road. So, TJ, man, uh, I'm appreciative of, of you taking the time out. For the listeners, this is actually New Year's Day. This is January one. When most people are out uh, probably getting over their partying from last night or whatever, TJ and I are making time to try to improve one another. Uh, it was just We were able to sync up our schedules and get it done. So, uh, TJ, man, I appreciate you taking some time out of your day and uh, looking forward to an outstanding conversation with you, man. You too, Coach Taylor. Happy New Year, my friend. This is, uh, I'm excited about this. This is a great opportunity, and I'm looking forward to a great chat with you right now. TJ, man, I know you and I have talked uh, a couple times about uh, – several things, equipment, training philosophies, uh, you know, getting a chance to just talk to Chop about how, how things are going on in the, in the fitness field for you kind of thing. Uh, but one question I never got a chance to ask you, I mean, where's your passion for this field come from? I mean, how, how did you get excited about getting involved in this field? And, and do me a favor, tell me a little bit about what you have going on now, man. You know, how I got started, I was very fortunate. I had an amazing football coach by the name of Hans Whitaker. He was a coach for Babylon. And uh, Coach Whitaker... You know, he he seen some potential in me. I grew up uh, without a father, and he would pick me up in the morning before school, make sure I was going to school, and he would just train. He would teach me how to just get after it and uh, focus on the basics. Just got me real strong. Got me real strong. So I got started from my football coach Whitaker, um, and uh, I just fell in love with weight training. I just loved the feel. I found that was that was really the only time I was only really present as a kid. Just uh, I just always looked forward to training. So I was very fortunate starting out real young, you know, 15, 16 years old. And that was just uh, a big part of my life to train. I learned from a lot of mistakes that I've made, what works, what doesn't work. And uh, my passion is to really teach others you know, how to train their body. Their body is the only thing that you would truly ever own in your life. People may own a house and a car, but their body needs to come first. It needs to be prioritized. And I like to teach people how to train. You know, I'm I'm labeled a personal trainer, but I am a teacher. And I like to teach people how to train their body for a lifetime. No matter what you got going on, when you learn how to train, and I'm not talking about exercise, you know, I'm talking about when you learn how to train, when you really learn how to take control of the barbell or machine or dumbbell and, and really feel that muscle work and feel your body change from week to week. And then you learn how to fuel your body nutritionally and with a proper mindset. All those things work together. It is life-changing. And, you know, one thing I love is to how to work someone into it and, well, all, all the different people who I've had the opportunity to, to work with and, and will, everybody has a different story. Everybody has their own stuff going on in life. And one thing, when you come in through those doors of the gym, it's time to focus on you and your body and get after it. So I was very fortunate starting young, made a lot of mistakes. And growing up without a father, I always looked to male figures to kind of to learn from and, and coach me. And, you know, after Coach Whitaker, um, I was very fortunate to go to Herkimer Community College, play lacrosse. I was a face-off specialist, kind of like a fogo, you know, win the battle, get right off. And I uh, was influenced by my assistant coach, Scott Barnard. He became a training partner of mine. And he was an awesome coach, and uh, the coach of the was Paul Wareham. Um, he was the coach of the world team, met a bunch of great guys at Herkimer, and 
you know, Coach B, he really kind of helped me structure things a little more. Um, where Coach Whitaker, it was about just getting strong and moving weight, weightlifting. Coach B helped me kind of structure things a little bit more. And um, then from there, I transferred to Adelphi, came back to Long Island, and um, suffered a pretty nasty knee injury. I always had knee issues growing up. I was a catcher playing baseball. And I uh, had some, some growing pain issues, uh, osteochondritis desiccans, where the blood really wasn't circulating uh, in the bone properly. So I would get cortisone shot after cortisone shot. And, uh, you know, young guy, you're not thinking about your future. I'm thinking about winning face-offs and getting after the, the next game. So basically, I was put on a hold, and uh, I had to get, three screws put in my knee, the medial femoral condyle, which kind of a guy who's used to go, 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 go. First time in my life was I had to really sit back and basically I had to slow things down with my training and my lacrosse career came to an end. I remember um, I would go back in the gym. I joined the gym about 20 minutes away from my home where I didn't know anyone. I would just go there with my headphones. I was on crutches. My knee was all, my, my whole leg was atrophied up. I had these skinny calves. I was a tall guy, 6'2", and said, I got to build these legs up. You know, I never really trained legs seriously. I was more interested in, in bench pressing and typical Long Island physique where you wouldn't really train your legs serious. But I didn't always want to be solid when I played lacrosse. So it wasn't until one day I was in the gym and I seen this old man with these calves. I'd never seen calves like this before. And I went up to this guy and I said, oh, my God. I said, I've never seen calves like this. You know, look at these spaghetti legs. What could I do about these calves? This guy took a look at me and he said, why don't you meet me here tomorrow, 5 a.m.? I thought he was joking around. 5 a.m., I'm usually going to bed about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. So I ended up uh, taking him up on that opportunity learning to find out that he was a former Miss America Universe USA, um, Mr. World. He was an old-school classic bodybuilder by the name of Steve Mihalik. And let me tell you, what I learned from that one session, he put me through a 20-minute full-body workout. I never felt muscles in my lower limbs pumped up like this. I never felt the hamstrings engage, and I never felt my lats work. And he just put me through a workout, and I sat down, and, Whew, I didn't know whether I was going to puke, pass out, or kick my pants. But uh, it was the most incredible workout of my life. And uh, I called him up the next day and I said, man, I, I, I want to learn more. I want to learn more. I, I need more of that. And, you know, I'll rack your weights. I'll do whatever you need. But I'd really like to learn more. So I observed him train every type of person from professional bodybuilder to a football player to a young team to housewife and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life and at that time I was also uh, at Adelphi for health and phys ed and I also was taking the ACSM health and fitness instructor course. I remember after a couple weeks with Steve and training with him and training with his clients and just kind of being his apprentice he called me up and he said uh, this is your mentor and I remember I looked up in a dictionary, what's the word mentor mean? And um, he goes, I want you to come work for me. I said, well, Steve, I'm, I'm not certified. He goes, certified? You're certified through me. You know, so I ended up finishing my certification up at Adelphi at that time, and I can no longer play lacrosse, even though I still had a year left of eligibility, and I just kind of fell into training. And uh, I really loved it. Um, learned so many things along the way, but it was really – you know, some of the coaches I had and then, and then um, you know, working with Steve. And then I fell into uh, natural bodybuilding. And if you look up Steve Mahalik, you're going to hear about, you know, crazy steroids and drugs. But at the time that I met Steve, you know, I, I had read the, read the book uh, Guide to Building the Classic Physique the Natural Way by Steve Reeves. I love these old school bodybuilders where a man or woman could look at their physique and, I said, that's a beautiful physique. And these guys were strong. These guys were powerful human beings. And I just became fascinated how you could mold your body naturally. And at the time, I really was missing the whole link uh, of the nutritional component. So I did my first natural bodybuilding show with uh, Steve Preppery. And if they were to call one more pose on stage, I would have dropped dead. That's how depleted I was. I was um, 
I was I went down to a hundred and eighty two pounds there. And then after that show I said, Man, I said, I never want to feel like that again. I got into this, you know, to for for the health and, and I love the training, but man, that competition stuff, that wasn't for me. So I ended up uh, researching a little more, and I read a book called The Metabolic Transformation by Joe Convesti, and um, I ended up going to a, a training seminar in Massachusetts, and everything was coming in my way for not going to that training seminar, but I felt like, oh, something real deep that I had to be there. I felt like called to be there, and it was crazy how it worked out, because not only did I meet um, Joe Convesky and uh, another mentor, Dwayne Broadway, but I met my wife at this seminar and um, meeting a woman who shared the same face as I had and the same passion for training. It, it was just incredible to, to to meet this beautiful woman, uh, Amy Linus from, from down south, and we just really hit it off, and she was also a trainer. And uh, from there, pretty much um, we've been a team, um, training people full time. You know, I'll start um, in this almost 14 years now, and training people from 5 a.m. to you know 8 o'clock at night, Monday through Friday. And the more I train people, the more I learn, and it's just it's just been a great experience. I love what I do, and uh, you know I'll be in this for the rest of my life. You know, uh, living the life and inspiring others along the way. If you're working with a young, young, and we'll use the term young as far as training age, chronological age, you can use, use either one. Just let us know which one you're talking about there. If you, if, when you're working with players, clients, athletes, even strength enthusiasts, bodybuilders, I mean, what exercises do you define as appropriate? No matter what your walk is, athlete, um, physique development, bodybuilder, housewife, you want to focus on those basic movements. Largest muscle groups more. So when I'm training anyone, I'm going to talk to that person as if they never trained a day in their life, no matter how much experience they have. And a lot of people will be reviewed, but I want people to understand my language. I want to condition this person so you know I can open up their muscle cells so they can take in more oxygen, so they can take in more quality carbohydrates. So I'd run them through the basic squat. Let's see what their range of motion is like. Let's see if they can get slightly below parallel and their knees not protruding forward and them settle into the hole. Nice, smooth, controlled reps. So, you know, we'll see that. Let's, you know, let's see what your body squat looks like. And then I might have to, you know, put a, a box down and have them do like a little box squat, sit down, get their hips and glutes engaged and teach them the negative portion of the rep, the positive portion, that eccentric, concentric, the, the breathing and it starts from the very, very basic. So then I'll do some form of squat, some form of squat. Um, not everybody do I work up to a barbell. Not everybody do I do barbell squats with. Um, I you know, may use some of the, the tools that we have, some, you know, the great equipment that Tyler Hobson designed, some of the great equipment that TK Starr, Tom Kenny designed, you know, so uh, some of the Avenger stuff or some of the Medex stuff. You know, I have so many tools to work with. So basically the squat from there, we're going to go on to a press or a row, all right? The importance of, of a good press, not locking out, continuous nonstop action. Um, from there, we're going to go into a row or a pull down. So I base it off those three movements, and we assess from there, and then we, and, and then we take it from there. And uh, everyone's at different levels, but no matter who it is, and I teach them bodybuilding movements. And now when I say bodybuilding, most people are going to assume, oh, Get up there in your skivvies all tanned up, busting out some poses. No, bodybuilding to me is weight training with a purpose. Weight training with a purpose. So a lot of times my main focus is to strengthen the entire body, teach people a nice full range of motion, first and foremost, overall health and fitness, injury prevention, but teach people how to train their body. And it's great when I get a young kid who's hungry and passionate and wants to learn, and I teach him all the things that I wish I knew when I was that age. Or I get a guy who's, you know, in his 50s and never really felt comfortable, you know, working out with weights and just he's coachable and open-minded and be willing to trust me. Or I get a female, and most of these females are so misguided. 
There's so much guy that I'm scared of building muscle. You just don't have enough testosterone in your body to build muscle. You know, like, come on, we want to build as much muscle as we we can, you know, and then just teaching people through the process how to fuel your body, you know, how to hydrate your body. And just, I just think back when I was a, you know, high school football player and uh, college lacrosse, how I had no clue about training structure, about nutrition. And, you know, I just knew about lifting weights, weightlifting. Like, you know, and when I say, uh, excuse me, weightlifting, and lifting weights. What I teach people is how to lift the weight, be the cause of the movement, rather than be a weightlifter, just move weight. All right, I think it's unbelievable, some of these strength athletes, these strong men, these power lifters, that's unbelievable that they can move so many pounds. But my focus is, is to teach people how to lift the weight, be the cause of the movement, teach them how to perform a perfect repetition how to master that repetition, how to slow and controlled on the way down, continuous nonstop action on the way up, depending on what movement it is. And I just teach people how to get the most out of their time in the gym, in the gym. Break the muscle down, build it right back up with your proper nutrition. But when you're in the gym, the proper training structure, how to execute each and every movement and get to maximize your potential. You know, so there's so much that goes into it. And uh, we could talk about this for hours, but everybody is a little different. Um, and the things that I see on a daily basis, I see a lot of people who they're not doing it wrong. But you know what? Let me show. Let me coach you. Let me teach you how to make it more effective. We talk a lot about weak links in areas of our body as the athletes that we work with that may be a little more injury prone. And you and I have actually even talked about uh, even expanding that concept of weak links to include not only just the physical aspect, but even potentially the nutrition component or even the mindset component. I mean, what areas of the body uh, or even that l- larger picture, as we're talking about it, uh, have you identified as a weak link in your program and the people you get a chance to work with? Through the initial assessment, we'll see. And um, a lot of times, you know, I'll look at a person and before we even step on the gym floor, I'll I'll... I'll Try to get them to understand that your body does not want to be fit. Right? Your body, it's not normal to have great posture. It's not normal to have good, strong muscles. Stress, gravity, our job, age, pulls us down, stomach sticks out, shoulders protrude forward. So first things first, I'll teach you how to control your midsection. Rib cage up high, stomach pulled in, retract your shoulder blades back. And... A lot of times I find that it's a lack of flexibility. Never will you see me tra- uh, stretching for endless hours, but I'll teach people how to stretch and strengthen the muscle through weight training. Um, a lot of people I just find that they don't know how to train their back properly. They pull with their arms, pull with their arms. When No, let me teach you how to retract your shoulder blades. Arms are like hooks, nice light grip work your lats for the first time. So I just teach them through little basic steps. Let me teach you how to work your glutes and your hamstrings as as you're performing the squat movement rather than just hopping up and down and, and locking out. And I never lock out on anything. Keep attention on the muscle the entire time. So with a weak link, it's really, it's, it's, it's a hands-on approach with me. And it's through observation and really seeing where these people are and where I need to bring them. So uh, I find most of the weak links is in their minds. For years and years, I said I had bad knees, and it wasn't until my third knee surgery where I said, you know what, I'm not going to speak like that no more. I don't have bad knees. My knees are getting stronger every day. I have a knee that's strong and a knee that I'm getting stronger. So I want to talk about a weak link. Most people's mind is weak, right? So... Just as our people will practice in the weight room, practice these drills, practice these plays, practice all these things. You know what? I'm going to teach people how to practice thinking. I had another great mentor in my life, my friend Glenn Polverone. He taught me how to practice thinking. Practice thinking. Your thoughts create the way that you think. Believe that your thoughts uh, create the way your whole belief system. So... 
man, if I have a negative thought running through my mind or I'm, my talking that I have bad knees or I have a bad back, I'm storing this in my subconscious mind that I will always have a bad back. I will always have bad knees. So that's a weak link for a lot of people, their mindset. And the big thing is I bring awareness to the way you talk about yourself, the words that come out of your mouth. And I'll correct that right then and there and make you aware of what you're talking to yourself. Where, where, where the mind goes, the body will follow. Um, and as far as hands-on physical stuff for weak links, uh, I, I witness a lot of different balancing acts, a lot of different, uh, you know, stretching time on the side, little physical therapy type movements where, you know what, they have their place. But I want to take you hands on and, and, and work through weight training, through a full range of motion, even if it's body weight exercise to get you up to the point. You know, so we could hit those muscles. And it's great because what I love what I do is I'll take someone who has experience and I'll slow things down a little bit with their training, you know, with their rep and, and have them really get in their head on earning the right to move to the next repetition by perfecting the previous one right on. And just it's a different way of thinking when it comes to the training, perfecting the reps, each and every set, what goes into it. Have them so focused, so and, and, and so focused and just such deep concentration where they're getting the most out of each and every rep. And that comes with time, that comes with practice, so much goes into it. I want to talk about training intensity. Uh, coming from my background in the pros and the college sector, I mean, we, we pushed and we, we didn't stop. We just kept pushing. It was just the environment. And now that I've been in the private sector for a little while now, it, it's neat to see how people, you know, start off with whatever they perceive is 100%, and then they progressively try to get just 1% better, one rep better each and every day. And, and over time, they become exponentially stronger, um, as, you, as you imply, mentally more disciplined, et cetera. I mean, how do you start out with the, uh, identifying the appropriate intensity that you begin a training session with uh, an adult, a college athlete, a youth, a youth uh, individual coming in to see you? I mean, there's such a wide range of people that we work with in the private sector. I mean, how do you start with the appropriate, the appropriate intensity? It's with my initial conditioning, you know, uh, perfecting that squat, that row, that press, um, do some sled work and stuff like that. But one thing about intensity, people take it too far. It's about being intense and breaking down that muscle to build it back up. But my mentor, one of my mentors, Steve Mihalik, he had the Intensity Insanity Program. You know, I was going to war each and every workout. There was times we did 90 sets, 90 sets for legs in 35 minutes, nonstop. You know what? I burnt my adrenals out. I ended up getting mercury toxicity, too, from eating so much fish and crap. My the intensity was too high. So what I've learned over the years, yes, you want to be intense, but so many factors go to, into that intensity. Is someone properly fueled up? Do they have enough carbs in their system, you know, for breakfast, pre- and post-workout, leading up to the workouts? Is there, are you in a positive nitrogen balance where you have the protein present in your muscle cells? There's is enough fat in the nutrition so I could bring them to that intensity where they need to be. So... Yes, intensity is key. Um, getting strong is key. But you know what? Sometimes you have to back down the intensity. You need to smarten things up, clean up your form a little bit, maybe drop a little bit on the weight. Okay, you don't have to be go commando Rambo every single day. All right, sometimes you've got to back off the intensity to get the results. Yeah, I have to find that fine line. You know, how, how much sleep has that person got? Did they have a pre-workout meal? You know, there's people who come in ready to train. Oh, you have breakfast? No. Okay, well, I can't bring you to that intensity where I need you to be because you're not properly fueled up. I don't need you puking on me. I don't need you passing out on me. You know, so the intensity is key, but you have to be smart and you have to be prepared so I could bring you to that intensity. And it's very easy to, I used to think, oh, there's no such thing as uh, uh, overtraining. It's just under recuperating this and that. But you know what? It's very you can get overtrained, all right. And so many people they they are just so driven, and they'll just drive their bodies into the ground. You got to get that rest. You got to get that nutrition. You got to slow things down a little bit. All right. It's not always about how much weight you can lift. 
Now, your muscle can only feel the weight. You can't see it. So the intensity that needs to be really, really controlled. And there's a time and a place to bring it to absolute positive failure. And there's a time and a place to just stimulate that muscle, not annihilate that muscle. I want to talk about progression. A lot of people want to talk about workouts and what you're doing for your biceps on Mondays or chest on Tuesdays or whatever else going on. But I want to look at the program design over time. I mean, how are you justifying progression? Uh, maybe your percentages or your rep ranges or multiple sets and those types of things. And we all have our, our own setup, I guess, that works for us. But how do you go from point A to point B with a client and know when they're ready to move up in weight? First off, take a look at that form. They need to earn the right to move to a heavier weight. A lot of people, I have to drop down in weight, try to get them to unlearn what they've learned. And I say this over and over again, your muscle can only feel the weight. It can't see it. Right? So everybody gets caught up in how much weight they can lift, how many reps, how many sets. Look, all right, I could have you perform four repetitions, or I could have you perform 20 repetitions. But you know what? Let's not so get caught up in the rep range, but let's get, let's see how slow is your negative. As that muscle is stretching, elongating, how slow are you taking that on the eccentric movement? How fast are you exploding on the concentric movement as that muscle is contracting? Are you flexing that muscle to really create that change, or are you just moving the weight, throwing it around? So, so many factors go into that. You know, so many factors going into that. You know, am I going to use three sets of 10 to 12 repetitions because Joe Weida says so? No. You know what? But this is what we've been programmed to think. So, it really depends. I like to do a nice cedar set. I like to do one or two, sometimes three sets to feel it out. But if I'm warmed up, I'm going to go right into that working set. And many times, if I am focused on this, this is how many reps I'm going to get, it really depends because there's times where we'll do, you know, if we're working on strength and really focused on getting stressed, I think you can't go wrong with the five sets of five program. All right, doing five sets of five repetitions, but each one of those repetitions earning the right to move to the next one. But right, sometimes we'll do 15, rep, 15 seconds rest to 50 reps. Right? You, you perform maybe, you know, eight to 10 perfect reps. Maybe you'll get 12 to 15. Take 15 seconds rest. Pull that energy back in. Do a couple more. Maybe you'll get eight, nine, 10 more. Maybe you'll get four more, but creating perfect reps. I think people get too caught up on how many reps or how much weight, this and that, when you want to be consistent with the rep range. Make sure that the, that you're being consistent with, with the positive and the negative. Um, a lot of times the way I was taught, you know, with Steve, and Steve was a, a, a Mahalik was a very high-volume guy, um, Coach Barnard, he was, you know, more like we're doing three sets, 10 to 15 repetitions. Um, then I got, you know, to train with Jerry Scalisi. He really taught me the importance of, you know, really barbell squatting, barbell rows, deadlifting. Then I got, you know, to meet uh, Dwayne Broadway and Dave Gooden. He's phenomenal natural bodybuilders, you know, all about really feeling the muscle. And then, you know, it was really interesting. My wife, she got me, for my birthday, three days of training with six-time Mr. Olympia, Dorian Yates. And you hear, you know, Dorian Yates, you make a high-intensity one set all out to failure. So I go out to train with Dorian. And actually, the, the airline got canceled. I was supposed to fly out to his gym. The airline went on strike, and it turns out, like, two weeks later, he was going to be in New Jersey. So I sat through traffic from Long Island to New Jersey, practicing patience, and I got to train with Dorian for three days in a row. And Dorian, he really helped me structure my training. And 
You know, people would think he would do one set for failure. No, he would do several warm-up sets until he goes to that one set for positive failure. Um, but he really helped me with structure and how I, I program um, my training and, and others' training. But really, no matter how you split up your body parts, your splits, there's always going to be some type of overlapping. But what I like to do, you know, I like to take a day's rest in between. I believe Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or every other day, is a great split. Take the weekends off. Um, as you get more advanced, I recommend two days on, one day off, two days on, two days off. So you train Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, we can go upper, lower, rest, upper, lower. Or as I get into it and the intensity gets a little more, you know, I only train three days a week. Maybe I'll do uh, upper body on Monday, lower body on Tuesday, take two days rest, then do a full body on Friday, followed by another two days rest. If I'm still not getting enough recovery in, maybe we'll just go train full body every third day. So it really depends how you're structuring your body parts what your goal is, if you're just in for physique development, if you're in, your goal is mainly to just get real strong, or if you're training sports specific, it's all, it's all, you know, what the goal is. Well, TJ, man, I don't want to take up too much of your time here. I know it's, uh, again, it's, it's New Year's Day, and I appreciate you taking some time away from your family on a, on a, a day that we get a chance to uh, spend a little bit of time with uh, the loved ones of our lives, so Man, if anybody had any questions about this conversation, and I'll give it to anybody that's listening to the show, um, TJ and I could talk about training both ways uh, for hours, on top of hours, on top of hours. Uh, if you're looking for a guy that you want to reach out to via email or get a chance to meet at an event, or uh, if you're up on Long Island and you want to stop in, um, this guy will give you an unbelievable wealth of knowledge from equipment uh, to program design to, again, the names that he's even putting into the conversation here uh, are just spectacular. So, um, man, TJ, if someone wanted to reach out to you to find out more information about uh, what has worked for you, man, how could they go about reaching out to you and, and just connecting with you? Oh, man, you know, you could uh, contact me at New York Strength and Fitness at gmail.com. Um, you could con- contact my wife on uh, Facebook, Amy Linus, L L I N A S Lynch. You know, she's uh, very active on the Facebook. But one thing I I love about you, man, is you're so active on the social media, and that's one thing that I would really like to start to really grasp, especially with YouTube and and stuff like that, because there's just so much that I like to teach, but it's more kind of you have to see it in action. You have to understand it. You have to get that visual to see it. And uh, we have such an awesome setup. We have... 50 or 60 of the best machines ever made. We have all Tyler Hobson's original pendulum design, which was unbelievable because, you know, I've been able to overcome so many injuries using his machines and help so many other people, you know, who were told never to squat again and never do an old overhead press using his seated squat machine, using his uh, shoulder incline. And, um, you know, we have just great tools to work with. You know, there's uh, things that we can do with our machines, which are our tools, you know, to work people up to where they need to be. You know, there's nothing like the freedom of free weights, but, you know, machines, they're great tools to work with to really get you in that full range of motion, build you up to those free weights, you know. So we use a variety of different tools in our training. Uh, we got all the vintage York stuff and all, you know, Tom Kenny, TK Star. I did a lot of restorations on, on his stuff. Uh, I used to be a sales rep for Nebula, so we got all their heavy-duty racks and benches and uh, all that good MedX, MedX Avenger stuff. So, yeah, please shoot me an email. Um, I'd love to uh, get more involved. And my wife and I, my wife, Amy really handled it. We have uh, the Diet Doc of Long Island, which we're really – she's really teaching people the importance of the nutrition. Um, whether it's someone who doesn't even work out to, you know, your, your top athlete, um, but, uh, or even peaking people for shows. But the Diet Doc of Long Island, and you can contact her. 
uh, through Amy Linus at yahoo.com or through her Facebook, Amy Linus, L-L-I-N-A-S, Lynch. For all the listeners, man, do me a favor. Uh, reach out to TJ. Ask him some questions about uh, what's working for you and what's working for him. Again, use social media to, to enhance your, your networking. I think it's something we really need to do um, as, as professionals in this field to enhance each other's uh, learning curve. And, uh, again, TJ, man, hopefully this is a launch pad for us to do many more things down the road, and I look forward to keeping in touch, buddy. Absolutely, man. God bless you and your family. Thank you so much for the opportunity.